Hi, and welcome to this knitting podcast. It doesn't have a name yet, but hopefully I'll figure one out um, within reasonable time. I am Vanilla, and I am the woman behind Simply Vanilla Stitching, and I'm coming to you from quite cloudy but warm Denmark. There's a window there. I'm looking out of it to see how the weather is. Obviously, I'm inside and it's very warm in here. So if you see me looking a little gooey, that's why. Um, this is a new knitting podcast and there are quite a few on the market out there. But I thought I'd give it a go. I am hopefully not going to be just like any other regular knitting podcast. Um, and I hope to stand out just a little bit. We'll see how, how that goes. Um, but I've had this idea for years that I was going to be a knitting podcaster and I wanted to create this community of having knitting fellow knitters um, talking to each other and stuff like that. Um, and I tried to engage in a lot of knitting communities um, of existing knitting podcasters, but I never really felt like I had the same kind of community that they felt like they had. So I've come to the conclusion that it's probably because they are the podcaster and there are people talking to the podcaster about their projects and not really viewers talking to each other. There probably are, but I just never felt like I was really a part of that. So here I am now trying to be a knitting podcaster. As I said, I've had this idea for many years, but I've always made up excuses for myself. Like I was so self-conscious um, about being on a camera and also the things that I would do like the things that I would knit or, or crochet. So I never really felt like I had anything to contribute with. Um, and I didn't really feel like I was, you know, suitable for, for a camera, but I've grown a lot more self-confident and now is the time. Another excuse that I no longer have is the, the lack of time. I recently graduated university, so I now have a master's degree, woohoo. Um, but I don't have a job, so I am unemployed. Um, obviously I am job seeking, but I've been unemployed for one and a half, almost two months now, and I am going out of my mind with not having anything to do. Obviously I am applying for jobs, um, but until I get one, I am just going to stay at home. Basically, like that's what I do. I walk around home and I tidied this house, like every damn day for the last one and a half months and I'm kind of getting tired of it. So now I want to try something else that I can probably use my time on and that's going to be the knitting podcast and the things that are going to go into the knitting podcast obviously. So um, I am in my guest room. I'm sitting on a bed because my office is currently being used as a storage room and it's very terrible, like it's, it's, it's very sad. We moved into this very nice apartment almost a year ago and we're still using my office as a storage room and it's, it's really embarrassing. Also, there, there are no curtains in this room. There is a bed and there's a TV and everything, but there, there are no curtains. <laughs> so if you see why I'm like fixing my posture, that's, that's the primary reason because I'm on a bed and, and it's, it's probably not the most or the, the, the greatest position to be in for a long period of time, but. So this knitting podcast, I don't know if you can tell, I am a bit of a rambler. I go off a tangent very easily. Um, and I think that's basically what this knitting podcast is gonna be a lot about. Not going off a tangent, not really, but chatting. Um, I, I have a plan for the knitting podcast. And I know that that plan does not include a whole lot of new cast-ons. And I think, or I know for a fact, that is quite strange for a knitting podcast because I see a lot of knitting podcasters that just cast on three new projects every time they podcast. And I sit here like, I can't even cast on two within a month. <laughs> or I can, but I would never finish them. Um, so. It's going to be a lot of chatty, chitty chatty knitting with me. And I'm, I think I'm going to talk about a lot of different things. So maybe like knitting related things, personal life decision things. And it's all going to be one big journey. We're going to 
you're gonna go on the journey with me from being unemployed to hopefully finding a job someday. And also, I am planning on eliminating my yarn stash. And that is the primary reason or the primary goal of this knitting podcast is to take all of the yarn that I have stashed over many years. It's not a big stash, but there are yarns, yarn in there that is just so old, like six years old. And I'm gonna use that now because it has been in there for long enough. Personally, I don't have anything against stashes of yarn. Um, it's not like they, they stress me out or anything. I, I don't really mind them. I'm not looking at them daily, but because I'm being unemployed, because I'm being unemployed, because I am unemployed, um, I don't really have um, an income. Because I live in Denmark, we do get paid to be job seeking. Thank you, Denmark. <laughs> um, but it's not really like, I, I'm not rich or anything at all. Like it pays my bills to the brim. Um, and then I don't really have a whole lot. Like if I would go out purchasing yarn right now, I would probably miss a day or two of food. That's just how it is. So I don't really have a lot of money and therefore that is another reason why I would like to finish my stash or get it down so far that I can now say that I don't have any more yarn that I can actually use in it. Hopefully I'll get a job in the meantime before I'm done knitting all of this yarn. I'm really hoping. And if I do, I'm going to continue to update you guys. Just probably not every week like I'm planning to right now. But because I'm going to eliminate my stash and not purchase any yarn at all because I don't have the money, I'm probably not going to follow this regular knitting podcast vibe. I'm probably not going to start off with like, what I'm wearing, this is my whips, this is my finishes, this is the purchased yarn I've had. Probably not going to happen. Um, I'm probably just going to like show you this is the pattern I'm working on, this is how far I've gotten. Maybe once once or twice in, in a month it's going to be done because obviously I don't have a lot else to do than knit. So I am quite quick. Um, but that's basically what it's going to be about. And then, as I said, I'm going to be very chitty chatty because I don't talk to a lot of people. So just talking to a camera is actually quite nice. I quite enjoy it. I like talking, but I'm at home and there's only my dog here. She does not answer me. So, right. My stash is, I think, roughly six years old. Um, the recent years, I have purchased yarn for a specific project and I've used it for the specific project. And then I've only had like scraps left and I've used that for scrappy projects and etc. Um, so I don't really have like any new yarn. The stash that I have is consistent primarily of acrylic yarn because that is the first kind of yarn that I bought. Um, I think a lot of us purchased acrylic yarn um, as the first type of yarn that we used, just because it's cheap. And I personally don't have anything against acrylic yarn. I know that a lot of people will probably headhunt me, <laughs> headhunt me, blackmail me? I don't know, they'll probably like run after me with, with a fork and try to stab me for saying this. Um, but I'm aware that there are all these environmental things, but I've not looked into that. So I'm not going to say sit here and tell you that it's terribly wrong to use acrylic yarns. I've purchased a lot of acrylic throughout my time. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of that acrylic is still in my stash because I never got around to using it. Acrylic is not my favorite yarn to use. Um, and obviously, that's why it's still in my stash. But then again, it's not the worst thing to use either. Um, I've created a cardigan from, from acrylic yarns, which I really like. It's very nice, it's very warm. But in general, I'm not a big fan of acrylic yarn on my skin. So for example, a t-shirt, I'm not a big fan of it being like directly on my skin. I feel like I can't, my body can't really breathe through it, which obviously it's plastic, so it makes a lot of sense. But as a cardigan and stuff like that, I really enjoy it. 
I am planning on or hoping to create some um, some t-shirts or some bralettes or tops or something like that with acrylic yarn and I guess we'll just have to see how how they are to wear. Maybe it's not as bad as I fear it's gonna be. Maybe it's nice and maybe it's not and then I'll have to frog it and I'll have to figure something else out but we'll see. We'll take it when it goes there. <laughs> so to the left of me, probably you're right, I'm not sure, I have um, a few skeins of, of yarn that I have picked out of my stash and this is the, the yarn that I have in a large amount or in larger quantities that I am certain that I can make actual projects with. I still have a whole bunch of cotton in there. I like cotton. Can make granny squares with it if that's what I feel like. I also have some sock yarn in there. I'm not going to count that as the things that I really want to eliminate right now. That's just like a bonus. <laughs> if I feel stuck one day I can just cast on a sock and it's nice. I like knitting socks but we can talk about that later. So I think shouldn't I just go through these different yarns and I can just say like how much I have of it and just show you guys so you get the idea. I think that's what we're gonna do. That's what I've planned. Also me looking down, I don't know if I said this, but me looking down, it's because I have a notebook. Oh there's just there's like the sticker on it. I have a notebook with the notes because as you've probably noticed, I'm very good at going off a tangent. And I need notes to bring me back. <laughs> that's me. You'll you'll figure that out. You'll notice that very good at it but let's just start so i have let's start with the mega ball i have this huge ass ball and this is actually not that old this is from hobby um it's 100 percent acrylic like most like i think i have one skein over here that is not acrylic but um this is actually not that old this is something that my mother bought me um because she wanted a sweater uh, knit of it and then she bought me two of these gigantic 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 that's very difficult for me to say um balls and I still have one entire ball and I have like one third of the other ball left no probably not one third maybe one fourth of the other ball so and I knit her sweater so I know for a fact that this is going to be enough for a cardigan and I really want to eliminate this like this is very nice acrylic yarn. This is very soft. It doesn't feel like terrible or anything. It doesn't feel like plastic. It's very nice. I really like this. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a cardigan. I don't know what cardigan, um, but I think it's gonna be a cardigan. I'm gonna put that here. I'm not planning to knit any sweaters simply because acrylic yarns, sweaters are gonna heat you up. Sweating in acrylic, not gonna be my favorite thing ever. Um, and also I've made sweaters with acrylic yarn before. And I it didn't really, it didn't go well. Like the drape wasn't right. So it was just like a very, a very light sweater. And it didn't really, you get the point. If you've ever tried knitting a sweater in acrylic, then you probably know what I'm talking about. If you, like, if you have knitted a sweater in wool and then one in acrylic, you know the difference between those two. Like the wool is so much heavier and it has much more drape to it than the one in acrylic. But we're gonna try. Continuing. I have this white, um, also acrylic. This is purchased in a big box store. It's also very soft. Like this is the kind of acrylic that I knitted a cardigan out of and it's very nice, very soft, very, very nice to work with. It does not, feel like acrylic. Like these two kinds of like these two are like they feel they don't feel like wool but they are closer to wool than that regular acrylic or some of the bad acrylic that you could find out there. But I have I don't have a lot of this left. I have this and then I have a teeny tiny like ball left. Um so I think I'm probably gonna knit um, a bralette or a top of some sort with this. Um, it's not going to be very big because there's not enough yarn for that but I'm hoping that I can make something very nice and also I really love this white. It's not like an entire like really white. Just try to show you like it's not truly right, right, white 
um, but it's like a an eggshell white I think and I really like it and I think it makes me look tan so that's nice <laughs> anyway <clears throat> moving on my voice is cracking now oh no I have this green yarn I have quite a bit of this I have sweater quantity again acrylic it is actually the same brand as this I've just reused this so many times like this is one of the first ever acrylic yarns that I ever purchased like I think this is roughly six years old maybe five I remember that I went to a big box store and I purchased this along with um, some very pink acrylic yarn too to make cushion covers um, so um, it was like when I first started crocheting I really wanted to make these very like bubbly or like cushion covers with bubbles on them so I did that and I purchased this along with the pink yarn and the pink yarn I turned into cushion covers but this green yarn I never got around to using I have I've done some weird things with this this is that's why it's in a ball and not in like a hank ball like those balls that you buy at the store um but it never really worked out so I'm excited to see what we're gonna do with this I don't know if I'm gonna make a cardigan out of it if I'm gonna make several tops out of it I don't know we'll see but I really like the color that's like that's the thing I really like this color green and purpley reds are my favorite colors ever so I hope I can find something very nice to make out of this Let's do it. Um, I have this red and a general thing in this is that there are no labels. <laughs> like these are things that I have knitted and propped and put it in my stash. So a lot of these don't have any labels. I think maybe two of them have labels. And one was the hobby, hobby, big, big ball. Um, but this is, I'm pretty sure this is also acrylic. It feels like acrylic, it looks like acrylic. And I am almost certain that, I'm sorry, my eyes are itching. I'm almost certain that I purchased this in a supermarket. That like they had these teeny tiny 50 gram skeins or balls and I purchased so many of them. Like this is not, obviously these balls I'm showing you is not all of the yarn. That's just one ball of all the yarn that I have. Um, and I don't remember what I've ever done with this. I just know that I have so much of it um, and again sweater quantity I don't know what I'm gonna do with it should I make a cardigan I think it could be a really nice cardigan color I really think it could so maybe I'm gonna do it I saw one on actually I saw one on Phil Kovana's website but it did use mohair and acrylic mohair it's not really a good substitute for each other but maybe I'll figure something out but this is really like I love the color of this and I hope I can find something great. I really, if I can, I would like to make a cardigan out of it. We'll see. Maybe, if I'm lucky. So, next up. Gray ball. Acrylic. Again, obviously. Always acrylic. So this is, yet again, it's the same brand as these. Um, purchased from a big box store. This is very soft. I have knitted with this so many times and frocked it <laughs> so this is like so used but it makes it so soft i don't know if you ever like had the kind of yarn where the more you use it the more like the more stress you put on it the softer it gets like that's this this gets this is so soft and i love it this is so old as well i'm i believe this is the very first yarn that I ever purchased with the intent of creating a garment and that's many years ago I'm pretty sure it's like six or seven years ago um, I recall me being with my mother and being like I want to crochet a sweater and my mother was like are you gonna crochet a sweater and I was like yeah I'm gonna do it YouTube says that I can so I'm gonna do it so <laughs> We went out and we bought a whole heap of this yarn and I I crocheted a sweater with it. It did not turn out well at all. I never finished it. So it had a lot of like it had just one loop or one what's it called? Like one 
loop hanging out so that I continued it so that I could continue it, but I never did. And then a couple of years ago, I frogged it and I tried knitting, knitting a sweater with it. Didn't turn out well. And now I am currently, like right at this very moment, working on a shawl that I'll show you guys at the end um, with this yarn. And I think it's actually gonna turn out pretty great, but I still have two balls with like this size of this yarn yet. So again, not a sweater quantity of yarn, but definitely enough to make a top or two. And that's what we're gonna do with it. Um, and I hope it's gonna, hope it's gonna turn out great because this is really soft and I really want it. But it needs to be something that does not expect a lot of drape because this is very light. This is very light and fluffy acrylic and it does not have any sort of drape to it at all. So anyway, moving on. We have this teeny tiny ball. We have multiple of these teeny tiny balls, but um, this is like a, a vest quantity, I would say. There's, there's no more than a vest. This is wool. This is 100% wool, amazingly enough. It's the only stash yarn that is wool. This was gifted to me by my mother-in-law many years ago when I first started knitting. Um, and she purchased or she gifted me a pattern for a vest and then the amount of yarn that I needed to create the vest. I am not a vest person. I don't wear vests. I don't like west, wests, vests. This is difficult. Um, so basically I knitted up almost entirely and then I was at the yoke because it's knitted from the bottom up and that was before I knew that I did not like that. Um, and, and then I just let it sit right at the collar, like just so it was almost done, but it only needed like a little rip. But because I never wear vests, wear vests, this is so difficult. I was not motivated to finish it. And then a couple of months ago, I took the yarn, I frocked the vest, I washed it, rolled it into balls, and it's ready to be used. And I don't know for what, because this is like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like Aran weight um, wool. So it's not a thin wool, and it's a very warm wool, I'm pretty sure. But we'll see. I have a vest con quantity, oh my lord so hard talking so hard <laughs> but you guys will have we'll have to wait and see what i make of it next up second last is this and i have so much of this this is recycled cotton um i've made a few baskets of this crocheted a few baskets and i still have a sweater's quantity i have so much of this and actually i have a project in mind for it and I think it's going to be the very next thing that I cast on. And I'm so excited to try it. Because it's been a while since I last touched this. And I really like the feel of it. It feels very, like it almost feels cold. And that is impressive when we're in a room that's, I'm pretty sure it's like 28 degrees Celsius in here. But this almost feels cold. So I think this is going to be very nice for like a summer t-shirt. And I have one in mind. So I think it's gonna be that. But anyway, this yarn is, once again, very old. Um, I think it's one of the first things that my mother gifted it, gifted it, gifted to me. Um, so again, like five or six years ago. And she gifted me a whole heap of this. And now I'm grateful because I can't afford to buy anything. Very, oh no, it's rolling. <laughs> very last piece of stash yarn and this is one that i am very upset with <laughs> this is once again acrylic yarn and you can already see hopefully i don't know if you can but hopefully you can see how shiny this is this was some of the first acrylic yarn that i bought for knitting so let's just consider this like this was this is from a big box store this is soft it has the same spin to all of it it's kind of fluffy looking like it's, it's very nice this however is the cheapest 
luckily for me, I didn't have any money at the time I bought it. Still don't, but for other reasons. And it's so bad quality. And I'm not saying that to bash it, like, or yes, I am saying that to bash it because it's not because it's acrylic. You can see I've knitted quite a bit with it to figure out what I wanted. It's not because it's acrylic. Because you just saw I have a lot of acrylic that I'm actually kind of excited to use. But this is acrylic. It's just like you can tell that it's cheap. It has like some places in the yarn that's very tightly spun, almost like a thread. And then other places where it's like big balls, uh, like big balls of just yarn that's fluffy and it just gives the super strange texture when you try knitting it up and also the like oh, i don't even think you can see but like right here there are multiple strands that are so tightly spun and then you have some that are very loosely spun and when you knit this up it just looks so strange i'm not i'm not into it i tried knitting a sweater a cardigan like a tank top a hat even, and nothing goes right with this yarn. And I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but I have so much of it, like so much of it. You don't even understand, like there's so much of this yarn. And I asked on Ravelry what people would use very bad quality acrylic yarn for. And some of them would say that they would donate it to a charity shop, but just with this one single, I'm like, I would never donate this to something and expect them to sell it for money. I don't think this yarn is worth any money at all. And luckily this is a big box brand, so I'm not gonna bash any creator or any like crafter for this. I really hate this yarn. Um, I think I might make baskets out of it crochets and baskets I think that could probably work I just hold like three strands together and it would probably work out pretty fine so I think that's what we're gonna do but I have so much of this like I could make so many baskets but again we're gonna have to wait and see what I create with it but it's definitely not gonna be a garment because I've tried and it did not go well watch my words so I'm getting tired of sitting in this position, <laughs> um, but I'm almost by the very end of this video. And I say almost, I'm probably still going to talk for like 15 minutes, but still. So the, the plans that I have with all of these yarn, yarns, yarn, first thing, please let me know. Can you say yarns when you have a multiple yarn or is it just called yarn? I don't know. English is not my first language. I don't know how to speak. You will also notice that in upcoming episodes. But the plans that I have for these yarn yarns, whatever the right, the correct word is, is gonna be primarily, not primarily, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind there. It's gonna be strictly free patterns. I'm gonna look at Ravelry under free patterns and I'm gonna find free patterns to do this with. Now, that does not really have a whole lot to do with me not having any money because I could, I could defend spending like a few dollars on a pattern or a pink pattern. The problem is that I'm most definitely going to have to use an alternative yarn than recommend it. So obviously I'm going to use this yarn and that is most definitely not going to be a recommended yarn. And therefore, I can't expect the product of the pattern to be any way like the one, like the actual product. I can't expect mine to be like that product because I'm using a different yarn. So it, it's not gonna have the same drape. It's not gonna have the same effect. It's not gonna have anything like the original. And I do not want to waste my money on purchasing these patterns to then find out that the yarn is not suitable for the pattern because then I'll have to go out and find another pattern. It would be a lot different if I was just trying this and then if it didn't work out, then I would go purchase the yarn for the pattern and knit it anyway. But that's not what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna use this yarn and find a pattern for it. Um, so again, I'm not really, I'm really not 
hating on paint patterns. I really love paint patterns and I think most of the gorgeous patterns out there are paid for. Um, but it's just a principle. Like, I'm not going to pay for a pattern to then find out that the pattern or the product is not working with the yarn I have. I'd much rather find several free patterns and then try them out with the yarn. And also, I'm going to show you guys some very nice free projects that you can go out and do with your own yarn or at least try out and then maybe you've noticed that mm, you didn't really like it and then you can just find something else. No money wasted. So, that was it. Um, that was my rant about pay patterns, which is not a rant because I, I use pay patterns. I purchase patterns too often, or I did. I don't anymore, but I did. So, but free patterns for this one. And I think that is like kind of a wrap up of the whole introduction to this knitting podcast. Um, I hope I didn't lose you anywhere. I probably did, but I hope you stuck with me. Um, and I hope I'll see you the next the next time I I podcast. Um, I'll just very quickly go over my current whip because it's actually a little a little start to stash stashing my bust busting my stash um, because I'm using the gray acrylic yarn that I showed you and I am making a shawl out of it. So I'm just going to reach over and get it. Excuse me. So I am in the middle of a row because why not? But what I'm knitting is um, it's going to be a shawl. Like this. Um, and basically it consists of just stockinette and then some twisted whip, twisted rib sections and then it continues all the way down. Currently I am at a bubble section. Um, and I did not know this, but I hate doing bubbles in knitting. I hate it. It's the first time I do it and probably hopefully the last time. I really truly hate it. It takes so long and there's, there, there are so many stitches that need bubbles. Um, but that's what I'm currently working on. And I'm hoping to get this done by tomorrow. And that might be very, like, that might be very optimistic. But I'm hoping. Because I really, really, really want to cast on this recycled cotton. I really want to cast on a project. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I just looked down at my, at my notes and I was like, oh, I didn't say that. This shawl right here, this shawl is um, the Sunday Morning Shawl by Espas Taiko. And I will link it in the description, obviously. Um, oh, that felt so strange to say. Like, I've heard that's been said so many times. It said, felt very strange to say. Okay, that out of the way. This recycled cotton. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna... I'm gonna knit this up and I'm gonna make it into a t-shirt and I found this pattern on Ravelry and I believe it's called at the seaside not only at in summertime I don't know I'm gonna link it in the description but the next time you'll see me I have most definitely cast on the t-shirt definitely and hopefully I can I can manage the pattern and I don't have to frog it and find something else because I really want that t-shirt. The t-shirt almost gives me like kind of Kubelos tea vibes from Petite Knit. Except it's it's a lot different, but it sort of gives me that kind of vibe. Like it has the v-neck, not a deep v-neck, but just a teeny tiny, and then it has like you can probably modify the sleeve length, but this one has like almost cap shoulders, and I really like it. And I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it. It does have stripes, but I'm just going to make it in a solid color. And I hope that the gauge is not so far off this one. Hoping. But we'll see. So I think that was the end. I think that was the end of the knitting podcast. This very first episode. I am planning to do one of these every single week 
until I find a job. And when I find a job, I'm, we're gonna see how it goes. Probably gonna be like every second week or every, every month, I don't know. But for now, it's every week because I will keep myself busy and I will keep you guys up to date with it. So I, I hope that, that I didn't ramble too much. I hope that I didn't speak too quickly because I have a tendency to do that when I'm a little bit nervous and obviously this being my first time looking into my, my camera or my phone, this is very new and a little teeny tiny bit frightening. But I hope I did okay. I would really love it if you could give me any feedback and also if you have any gorgeous free patterns that I think that I think I should try, that you think I should try or give a look at, then please do. Um, yeah, I don't know how to end this. It's so strange. I, I guess I'm just gonna say goodbye. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, please maybe like it, give it a comment. You might even subscribe. No getting ahead of myself. No, please subscribe if you really liked it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just going to say goodbye and we're going to see how this goes. So I'll talk to you in a few days and uh, goodbye. <laughs>